Hello, and welcome back to another episode of MITS TV, your virtual MITS Mingle network by Best of San Diego. Thanks so much for tuning in today, but please make sure that you guys like and subscribe to this channel on YouTube, and also check out our website where you can find all of our vendors. Now, on with the show. So we have a treat for you and no pun intended. So today we have Allison's Custom Confections in showing us how to make cake pops. So it's another food day. So get your stomach ready and open your eyes. We are ready to make some cake pops. Let's go. I'm Allison Wiseman with Allison's Custom Confections, and today we're going to be making cake pops. All you need to make a cake pop is you'll need some already baked cake, any flavor. You'll need some canned um, frosting, or you can use uh, your own frosting as well. And you'll need some candy melts or chocolate to dip your cake pops in. If you want to decorate them a little more fancy, you'll need some sprinkles, okay, or sanding sugar, anything like that. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cake and crumble it up into our mixing bowl. Um, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can do this by hand as well, and I'll show you how. Um, I'm wearing gloves because I hate getting my hands messy, so I'm just going to take the bowl, and I'm going to take the cake, and I'm just going to start crumbling it up right into the bowl, okay? Once it's nicely crumbled, then we're going to put it in the mixer. Or again, if you don't have a hand mixer, you'll start. You can use your hands to do this. Um, after you add, you're going to add a little bit of frosting. We want to get a consistency that sticks together, but that's not too wet. If it's too wet, what's going to happen is your cake pop's going to be greasy and oozy and not hold its shape. So I'm just going to put some frosting into the mixer. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it on low. You don't want to turn it on high or the cake will go everywhere. Okay? And this is just going to mix for a little bit, not very long. But you'll see it start to clump together, and that's what you want. Okay, it's looking, starting to look a little clumpy, if you can see that. Okay, so what I do to test it is I just kind of use my fingers, and if it sticks together like that, then it's ready to go. So that's all we need the mixer for, just that little bit. And again, you can do that by hand in the bowl. Use your fingers. You can use, um, use a spoon to mix it up, however you want to do it. It's not necessary to have the stand mixer, but it sure does go quickly with the mixer. Okay, once we have that done, let's get this out of our way. We're going to take a little pan, and we're going to take the cake dough, and again, which is, it's kind of like a little, bit, a little ball in here. You can see that. I've got a little ball. And I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to take little balls, and I'm going to use the palm of my hand and make little balls out of it. If you want, I use... I, I weigh them so that they're all the same weight. You don't need to, but you can use a scale and put that on there to make sure they're the same size if you're um, concerned about that. Just make a nice little ball and put it down on your pan that's either lined with parchment or you can use um, wax paper as well. Okay, so you're just going to make some little balls like that and just line them up. Make sure they're nice and as round as you can get. And it does work better if you use the, the palm of your hand and not your fingers. Okay. And again, you're just going to form these little balls. Okay. 
So they're about, they're maybe an inch, inch and a half wide. You don't, if you're putting them on sticks, you don't want them too heavy or they will fall when people go to pick them up, they will fall off. So I would say, you know, no more than maybe an inch to an inch and a half, okay? So if you see, it's about, about that big. Okay. All right. So that's how you're going to do that. And then we're going to pop these in the fridge. And with the magic of TV, here's some that have been chilled. You're going to put them in the fridge. They need to chill for approximately um, an hour. Um, and then you're ready to dip. Okay, the first thing you're going to do when you go to dip them is you're going to take your stick and you're going to dip the stick. Here's my melted chocolate. I have my chocolate all melted. Okay, you're going to take your stick and you're going to dip it in just a little bit like this. And then you're going to stick it into your cake ball about halfway in. Okay, so you'll get that little, that little bulb on top of the ball and that's okay. All right. But that should set, that's gonna help your, your cake pop stay on your stick. If you don't do that first, your cake pop will probably fall off when you go to dip it. Okay, when you go to dip the whole thing. So we're just gonna do that and a few of these. And again, if you can see there's like a little a little ball at the top of the stick, which is just, um, that's gonna blend in when you go to dip the whole thing, you won't see that, okay? Try to put it in your stick into the, into the cake pop so that it's straight up, so that it doesn't lean to the side. You wanna make sure it's gonna sit nice and straight, okay? So now the first one that I did is already nice and set. So we're gonna go ahead and dip that one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pop, I'm going to put it straight into the chocolate, and I'm not going to move it around a lot. I'm just going to kind of twirl it so I get every part of it covered, but don't move it around a whole lot. And then you're going to take it and you're going to use your finger and you're going to tap your finger as you kind of turn it to get the excess chocolate off. And then you kind of take the bottom. And the reason you're doing the bottom is so that it stands up straight. If you don't do the bottom, when you go to set it down, it's gonna start leaning. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to do another one. I'm going to straight it straight down in and then just kind of turn, turn it around. Try not to move it as, as, try to move it as little as you can. And then again, you're going to tap, tap, tap as you kind of turn it. Let me get the spoon out of the way. That may help the view. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of take the bottom and scrape it and put it down. Okay, we'll do a vanilla one. Okay, I'm gonna take again. I'm taking. You can see this. The chocolate is already set. I'm gonna take this, throw it around, and then come straight up. Tap, tap, tap. You don't want to tap on the edge because that's a little bit too too much pressure on the pop, and it could cause it to fall. Okay. And then I'm going to scrape the bottom and put it down. Okay, let's do another one. Again, I'm going to go straight in. And you need to have enough melted chocolate. If you don't, you're just going to find yourself having to scrape the, the uh, move the, the cake ball around a little bit too much. Okay, so you want to make sure that you don't have too much in there. Okay, so there's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, if we want to decorate these, we can take, here we go, one of these. If it's just been freshly decorated, or dipped, excuse me, you can take this and go, and just, I always do it into a bowl, because then I get to save my extra and pour it back into the pan, into the, the bottle, and there's my finished cake pop, okay? That's one way to do it, okay? Once, if they've already set, here's something else you can do. You can, let's take some chocolate. 
and we're going to put it into I actually have a piping bag. You can use a Ziploc if you do not have a piping bag. Um, the other thing I will point out is if you don't have a candy melting pot like I do, you can buy these. These are just little um, candy melt uh, disposable little boxes that make it easy for dipping uh, cake pops as well. Um, but again, you can use any kind of a taller bowl that you have at home. The only reason that, that I like to use this is because it keeps the candy melted for a longer period of time when I'm doing a lot of them. So then I just take, fill my, fill my bag. Again, you, you can certainly use a Ziploc. There's no reason you have to buy special bags if you don't have them already. Okay, so now what you can do is you can take your cake pop and you can, you can do a design on here. And then you take your sanding sugar and then you have your cake pop design all done. Okay. And let's see if you want to do another one. We can do And there you have a nice sparkly cake pop. Okay. And that's how simple it is to do cake pops and make them very pretty. You can do all kinds of designs. You could do polka dots if you want. You can make little circles on here. Anything you want. Be as creative as you want. Thank you for watching and feel free to find out more information about me on www.bessasandiego.com. I also am on Instagram and Facebook. And if you'd like more information, you can also visit my website at allisonscustomconfections.com. Thank you so much for watching. I am so hungry. Oh my gosh. I am so looking forward to making cake pops now at home. Thank you, Allison. So we're gonna bring Allison Weissman from Allison's Custom Confections on into the studio to talk to us today. Hey there. Hi there, how are you? Good, nice to see you, Allison. Same here. <laughs> Absolutely, so I'm loving this idea for the cake pops, especially since we're right now at home quarantining. So it's something for moms to do with the kids and so, or for kids to do Absolutely. with other kids. <laughs> so, so much fun. So uh, just going into a little bit of, you know, what you guys do over there. So Allison's Custom Confections. So I know confections means sweets. What are we dealing with? Well, I do pretty much everything from chocolates. I can do filled chocolates. I do custom cookies, sugar cookies, um, all different kinds of uh, specialty cookies. Um, I do black and white cookies, a lot of New York type specialties, rugala and things like mm -hmm. that. So um, just pretty much everything. I do some cakes, uh, lots of uh, little dessert cups, little mini trifles, things like that as well. It's amazing. So you guys can check this out right here. We're looking at some of Allison's website where you can see some of her uh, designs. And you can also check her out on Instagram and you'll see some of these things. So Allison doesn't just do cake pops, she's doing cookies. And so what I'm seeing here too is that we have some really cool designs that you know, kind of look with theme. So is that the best way to come to you? Is Do we want to come to you with the theme or do we need to come to you with exactly the idea of what we need? What's the best um, way? Either, either one actually works. I love when somebody comes to me and says, well, I'm doing this kind of a theme for my event. What can you do? And then I, I do a lot of research and think uh, a lot about different ideas of what I can do that ties in with the particular theme that someone is doing. And um, I find that to be really fun. I've done Harry Potter, a lot of Harry Potter themes, a lot of sports themes, and um, and I just tie it in. If somebody has a logo um, designed for their event, I can put the logo onto a cookie or chocolate or some kind of a favor, and that's very popular as well. 
I love that. So we don't just have to keep it social. We can make it, we can take this to work. We can buy some cookies for you for the coworkers and have them all have our logo on there. Absolutely. I do a lot of that for um, real estate agents and different different companies. When they have a corporate event, I, I can do the company logo um, on, on a cookie. So Wonderful. that seems to be really popular. So when somebody's doing a event with you, do you guys normally deliver? Will you guys stay and, and staff the event and hand things out? How does that work with Allison's Custom Confessions? Generally what I do is I will, I'm if people want delivery, I will deliver, I will do the setup. I have displays that I can bring as well to uh, make everything look very pretty and tie in with the colors and theme of the event. So I'm happy to do that. Um, I also have done some situations where um, if somebody wants like a little cake uh, or a cupcake uh, uh, demo where th we do it at the at the party, I can actually be there through the event to to work that as well. Nice. So we can actually do custom right then and there. So if they want to do chocolate cupcakes, but we have a variety of different types of top, you guys can exactly. do that for them. I right. love this. So we can keep it really custom and it can be so fresh and point right there. So that's, that's what fun. for me is the most fun. I love it. And so to actually be out there and handing out the sweets and seeing their faces. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that can be so enjoyable. So um, when we are looking, when, when for putting an event together, is there a specific amount of items you think that we should have if we're doing like a dessert um a dessert station at the end is there a certain number of things that you would usually suggest for us to do a variety yeah actually i do i i generally don't recommend having too many different items because if you have too many then people take one of everything and then there's a lot of waste i do like to recommend smaller type items sometimes if you're not doing if you're doing a variety maybe mini cupcakes instead of full-size cupcakes because then people can try more things um, and I generally recommend about three to four pieces per person is, is kind of a, an average recommendation for, um, for desserts. When you, when you say that too, or if we're looking at like the flavor palette and whatnot, are you going more with um, traditional? Do you want to throw in some of the trendy flavors? Like how, how does that, how, how do you steer people in that direction of what they should choose? I like to recommend things that um, majority of people like, like, um, generally chocolate is popular. So usually some kind of chocolate item, something maybe fruity like a lemon or a raspberry or strawberry, something like that. So a little bit of variety, but things generally speaking that appeal to a larger number of people because you don't want people to go, oh, I think that's kind of a weird item. I'm not really interested in that. And then you have leftovers. So I, I like a little bit of the popular items, but we can customize to what people actually would like. But I do like trying new trends with different different flavors and things like that if people are up for that. I love that. So what would you say would be a really good like lead time? So if I'm looking to book you, like how, how much time do you like to have ideally? Um, ideally, if I can have, you know, at least a month or two's notice because I do get booked up, especially for events that are on a Saturday. So sometimes I can have up to three events and I really can't take on more than that um, at one time. So um, so generally a month in advance, if not if not more, is desirable. And then what we can do is as we get closer within, you know, about seven days, um, we can come up with the actual numbers. But if we at least um, do a deposit and, and hold me, then I know I've got, you know, an approximate number for a specific date and I know what we're doing. Okay. So that's, um, that's really good information for people who are looking for Allison's Custom Confections. So I'm also seeing too, we're seeing a little bit of your website there a moment ago. And so do you guys do those displays yourself or is that, do you guys have those, those uh, props and things to make that happen? I, I do, yes. I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of displays, different kinds to go with different types of events, gold, silver, uh, multi-tiered um, items. So we can make the, uh, the table look really nice. Really, so it's like it's presentation and also flavor where you're looking at both pieces. Definitely very important. I love this. It's they, everything looks so special. So and everything is just so like it's it's cute. And you know we need a little bit more cute in the world. <laughs> well, thank you. I I appreciate that. But one thing I will tell you is my philosophy is it doesn't matter how cute or pretty it is if it doesn't taste good. So it's got to have a really good taste, and that's really important to me. Absolutely. I completely, I, I understand that because, you know, there's, I've been at parties and you're like, oh, it's so gorgeous. And then you taste it 
and you're like, this doesn't make sense in my life. <laughs> like this isn't worth exactly. it. Exactly. If it's not worth the calories, don't do it. <laughs> exactly. If it's not worth it, just don't, don't do it. Cause you know, you, you want to make sure that you are really enjoying your dessert because it really is the end of your meal. It's the thing that people remember a lot of right. time. Right. So I think that's just, it's so wonderful. And I'm loving this, that we're seeing some of the baby options that you guys do. And so, so cute. And like we're seeing right there, just so many things that kind of cycle through just for baby showers. We saw cookies there. We saw cupcakes we're seeing. And then we did our cake pops today. Right. So people are able to do those. And so when, you, um, when you're doing those cake pops for people that you can, you can actually put the logos on there as well, it seems I like. Can, I can, yeah. Depending upon the size of the logo, we, it may end up being small on a cake pop. But I also have started doing something new called cakesicles, which are a little bit bigger. They look like a popsicle. But it's mm -hmm. like it's the cake inside, so they're a little bit bigger, which gives me a little bit more surface area to work with to do some of those kinds of custom items. Nice. These this food talk is so not fair right now. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I have a random question. So when it comes to our cake pops, is there a rule whether or not they should be displayed top down, or do we want to stick up? Like, what is is there a rule, or is there a general rule of thumb there? Good question. Um, I think it depends on um, what you, how your display is working because if your cake pops are stick down and the pop on top, you've got to have something to stick them in. So um, you need some kind of styrofoam display or something like that. Um, if you don't want to do that, then putting them with the stick up looks really pretty. Um, I've done quite a few that uh, of those where we put some different colored sanding sugar underneath. And so it makes a really beautiful display to do them with the stick up, but they can be done either way. As long as we have some kind of a display, I do have several displays that I can use for stick down. Um, but it just depends on personal preference and what the cake pop looks like. Some of them look better upside down and some look better right side up. Absolutely. I love that, that you, Allison, you are a woman of options and solutions when it comes <laughs> to our dessert stations. So this has been a wonderful time talking to you today. And so everybody, if you guys have loved everything you guys have seen today from Allison's Custom Confections, please make sure that you guys check her out online. Her website is right now scrolling down at the bottom. You guys can also check her out on Instagram and you guys can take a lot of great look, a lot of a good look at all, all of her pictures on there. Ugh, I got a little tongue tied there. And so, and then also check out her Facebook. And so you can also go to the bestofsandiego.com website where you guys can find Allison along with all of our other vendors that we have over at Best of San Diego. So again, this has been a pleasure to have you, Allison, today here in the studio with us doing these cake pops and answering our questions. And so if you guys have liked this video, make sure that you guys subscribe to Best of San Diego on the YouTube network and then also make sure that you guys like this video and leave a comment down below if you guys want to see Allison do another recipe leave a comment and we can talk to her and get her to convince her to come on in and do another one so thanks so much this has been another episode of Mids TV let's do a quick trivia let's check it out Black Widow. I hope you guys got that one right. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of Mitz TV, your network for all things Mitzvah Mingle and the virtual sense. So we have been had a, another great day here with Allison's Custom Confections. Make sure that you guys check out bestofsandiego.com. It's my, been a pleasure. So my name is D'Angelo. I'm from Bellata Entertainment. And today's show was powered by SoCal Green Screen. Thanks so much. See you soon.